Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the November 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see the process, and get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In yesterday's video, I debuted the newest sheet load of cards, November 2023 and I told you how to download the printable for free. Now, if you haven't done that yet and you do want to download it, make sure to check out the description box below for the link. Today, I am back to show you how I made my first set, and I do have some tips that you might wanna pay attention to because this month's printable does have some special instructions. Also today, don't forget that my team of collaborators will be joining me here on YouTube and over on Instagram, sharing their sets for the month. To see the YouTube team, you can click on the hashtag, you can click on the playlist in the description box, or here on my channel, I do have everybody listed individually. To see the Instagram team's creation, I do have a link to those as well in the description box below. In yesterday's video, not only did I tell you how to download the free printable, I also told you about some special products I'm using this month. Love from Lizzie sent me their newest kit to use and we unboxed it yesterday and took a look at all of the contents. Now I won't be using them all, but I hope that you'll go back and check out that video to see what is in it. If you want to find out more about Love from Lizzie's products, I do have some links down in that description box. This month's printable is a special edition. We will be using our six by six paper with just four sheets of that, plus some coordinating cardstock and that vellum. You're going to yield eight cards. Also on the cutting guides, I do have a suggestion how to use the scraps. So it's also a no scraps edition. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools that I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I got started by choosing the four pieces I wanted to use from the Love From Lizzie Christmas Ballet Paper Pad. It was a hard decision, but I ended up choosing these four. On the left, I liked the Christmas tree with the piles of presents, and on the right, the nutcrackers and mice with that blue starry background. Now it's time to get started on the cutting, and the first thing we'll do is chop up those papers we just selected. We have two piece A's and six piece B's for each pattern. Now if your paper does have a direction, make sure you know that before you get started. Mine did, so I rotated it 90 degrees, and then I cut the two pieces from the bottom that were one and a half inches tall. Then I started cutting the strips that were a half inch tall. I will be using the half inch mark to the left of my cut line just so I can easily push it right to left. Now because these dimensions will take up that entire six inches, make sure not to do what I call generous cuts. Cut it right at the measurement, if not a tiny bit under. Now when I got to the last few strips, I needed to bring in my piece of scotch removable tape to hold that in place while I made the cut. Now for the second sheet, you'll see me do something just a little bit different to help that out. Now this I went to cut my last half inch strip and there was some left over and I was slightly confused so I started bringing back in those pieces to see if I had cut something wrong. But then I discovered this paper is actually a little bit bigger than six inches by six inches so I just have that little leftover. 
The piece B's will get left at this width, but we are going to trim piece A down a little bit. You're going to want to cut these each to four and three quarters inches wide. Now there is that little leftover at the side, so I'm going to hang on to that and later you'll see me use it to decorate the inside. For the next piece of pattern paper, I'm going to show you how to cut it a little bit differently to maybe avoid needing the scotch removable tape to hold those half inch strips in place while you cut. Instead of cutting A first, I cut the six half inch strips from the bottom first. And then when you get to the top, it's easier to cut pieces that are one and a half inches. After cutting the piece A's to four and three quarters inches wide, I cut the other two pattern papers off camera. There is going to be a little bit more cutting for your piece A's, but for now I'm going to skip and cut the vellum and the CS1 cardstock. For CS1, you'll need two pieces of coordinating cardstock. I ended up going with the two blues that came in the card kit, and each of these will be cut into four pieces that are five inches wide by three and three quarters inches tall. I thought the light blue and the dark blue would each go nicely with one of the coordinating pairs of pattern paper. I got started on those by cutting them into strips that were three and three quarters inches tall, and right now leaving it at the 11 inch width. Then once those strips were cut, I brought them back in and cut them into pieces that were four and three quarters inches wide. Now this does leave you with some scraps of cardstock, and these would be great later for added banners or flags, or maybe even to stamp some sentiments on. On this month's sketch, I do show a colored card base, but that is totally optional. I did decide to go with a color, and since both my pattern papers had that light pink in it, I brought in some Tailored Expressions Cupcake cardstock from my stash, and it matched that pink almost perfectly. I got out four sheets, and the first thing I do is cut these in half at five and a half inches wide. Now you could definitely go ahead and fold these in half right now for your card bases, but instead I kept cutting, and then I pulled in my mini score buddy, scored each of these at four and a quarter, which is half of the height, and then enforced that fold with the bone folder. This step is always optional. I just like the cleaner look when I do score before I fold my card bases. Once the card bases were ready, I brought back in my piece A's. Per that cutting guide, we're going to be cutting these into an angle. Now, you can definitely just eyeball it like I'm going to show you for this first cut. I just tried to get the same at the bottom to the right as I had the same at the top to the left of my cut line. Now you probably will need something to help you hold this in place. I use that scotch removable tape, but I have heard people say they use post-it notes as well. Once that was held down, I just slice it with my trimmer and now I have two pieces and you will want to make sure that you keep these pieces together. Now for this second one, if you want to be more exact with it, I wanted to give you some ideas. For this, I brought in a pencil and I just held it up so I knew which side was going to have the cut at the top. So once I figured that out, I turned it over and just roughly made a pencil mark there. And then I made a pencil mark in the lower right of the other side. Then what you can do is bring it into your trimmer or something else that has some marks and mark where you want it to cut. Like if you want it to be at the quarter inch or the half inch, or I did about halfway between those. Just if you want to be more accurate, then you're going to put those pencil lines right up to where your cut line is, hold it in place and make the cut. Honestly, I don't think either way is better than the other. I just think maybe eyeballing it is quicker. It just depends how exact you want to be with that. While I continue cutting those pieces, I have an extra special shout out. During the month of October, I had some channel members reach one year of membership. I want to take a minute to recognize each of them and say thank you. So their names will be scrolling up on screen now.
monthly support from my channel members helps keep me creating here on YouTube and sheetload of cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I have a link in the description box below. Now all of the main pieces are cut so we can start assembling the cards. I brought back in the cardstock mats and to adhere my pattern piece A to those, I'm going to be using Barely Art liquid glue. I'm going to do this because the one edge is pretty tiny there or the one corner so that will help me get in that tight space and when I go to put that piece onto my cardstock, I'm going to have a little wiggle time to move that around if needed. I placed my bottom piece first and then brought in the top one and when I place these I try to get even borders on those outside edges. Then I brought in the piece B strips that coordinate with this tree pattern paper. I'm going to use two of the pink with gift strips right up next to each of the tree patterns we just placed. And then for that center strip, I am choosing that tree pattern paper. Now you can definitely make these strips all three the same or do like I did here and have them go back and forth. To put these in place, I'm going to be using my ATG or a tape runner type adhesive. And although these strips are longer than I need, I do put adhesive pretty much all the way down the strip. Then for the pink ones, I'm going to have these go at the same angle as my Christmas tree papers. And I try to get an eighth of an inch between the Christmas tree and this pattern paper. Kind of the same border that we put on those outside edges. Once both the pink pieces are in place, then I added the Christmas tree strip between those, centering it as best as possible. And then when those are in place, you can just trim off those ends. I then put the second card together in that exact same way. The only change was that I went with the dark blue background and the other pair of coordinating pattern papers. I just wanted you to see each of one of these all the way through. Now one thing you could also do is rotate this and you could have the diagonal stripes going from top to bottom instead of left to right. I bet today when you go to watch my collaboration team you might see some of that. I put the rest of the cards together in more of an assembly line fashion. I put all of the piece A's on their large cardstock mats. When those were done, I went in and I put all of the center strips across and then I brought in those scissors and cut off all those extra sections. Now while I work on doing that, I do want to give you a little heads up that you'll want to keep watching today because there is going to be a special giveaway opportunity. Once all of the pattern papers were put on their cardstock mat, I brought in those pink card bases and started adding these to the fronts of each. I just placed these down flat, centered on the card front. You could definitely adhere the pattern paper piece to the card fronts with some foam tape for added dimension, but for me, I want to keep these nice and flat for mailing, so I did decide to just use my ATG. Once the card bases were decorated, it was time to add the focal point. Per the sketch, it suggests a vellum circle and then an image or sentiment die cut on top. But for me today, I'm just going to be using some ephemera from the kit. And because the kit came with this pretty sparkly tool, I want to try to use that for the circle. So I got out a die that was approximately the same size as on the sketch, and I'm going to go try to cut some of that tool. And luckily it worked perfectly. But I did find that if I just put the tool on the background, it didn't stand out enough. So I also cut some vellum circles and you'll see here that when those pieces are layered together, you can still kind of see the pattern papers behind, but it helps that gift or that stack of presents stand out from the background. 
Off camera, I finished cutting the eight vellum circles and eight tulle circles, and then I chose some ephemera to go on each of the cards. Over here on the right, I did choose one of the nutcrackers to go with that pattern paper. Now, the trees in the background did have an adorable ephemera to go with it, but I felt like it was too big for these cards. So instead, I chose some of the others. Sometimes it's one piece of ephemera, like the stack of presents or the mouse, other times it will be two or three pieces on that circle. Since the vellum and the tool are see-through, I do want to place the adhesive where it will be covered up by the ephemera. So to put the tool onto the vellum circle, I figured out where the present would go, and then using my ATG, I put a little strip of it in the center. Then I just press the tool into that. Now it's not gonna be a super great hold, but once we put the present on it, which I will be using some foam tape and adhere it to the center, that's gonna help hold that in place. The foam tape that I'm using today is from Tailored Expressions. I like just a little bit of lift it can give to items. Now you will notice there it was a little too wide for the bottom present in the stack. So I just cut it in half and put the rest of that strip on my roll to use later. And here's a close up look at that card. I am loving these so far. The next card was pretty much the same, except for this one I am using a trio of smaller pieces of ephemera. I have a stack of presents there in the bottom, and then a Christmas bauble and a candy cane up above that. I decided that I wanted the bauble and the candy cane to be flat on my circle, and then I added some foam tape to the stack of presents. Let me know below, do you like to put lots of layers and dimension on your cards, or do you try to keep them flatter for easier mailing? I put the rest of the focal points together and onto the card fronts off camera, and here's a close-up look at the eight of those. This month's Love from Lizzie kit came with some great embellishments and I did share close-up looks yesterday, but for my cards, I decided to use the little diamond peel-offs. I thought they would add a little bit of shine and they're still nice and flat. I put a trio in different sizes around the focal circle. While I work on putting a little more sparkle onto these card fronts, I wanted to tell you all about the extra special giveaway. Lizzie of Love From Lizzie is graciously going to send one subscriber 20 Great British Pounds worth of product and it will be free worldwide shipping. How exciting is that? Qualified entrants to this giveaway should be subscribed to my channel and at least 18 years old. Also appreciated would be if you would go over to the Love From Lizzie channel and subscribe if you're not already. To enter, you'll need to visit the Love From Lizzie online store and do a little browsing. Then come back to this video and leave a comment below with at least two products that you would put in your cart if you win this giveaway. Please make sure to use specific product names. If you want a stamp set, don't just put stamps, put the name of the stamp set. If you want to try their peel-offs, let me know the name of the color that you would be choosing. And so I know that you're interested in winning, make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag love from Lizzie, just as it is shown on screen. You need to leave your comment by midnight on November 15th, 2023, and I will draw and announce the winner shortly thereafter. And you don't have to worry about remembering all of these rules, I will have them listed at the very bottom of my description box. I'm looking forward to seeing what you love from Love From Lizzie, and good luck in the giveaway. Giveaway instructions did last a little bit longer than sparkle editions, so what I've done is I took the pattern paper scraps, figured out how wide they were, and cut each one in half. Then with my small scissors, I cut an angle at the bottom of each one. 
I then use my ATG, like now, to put a flag on the inside of each. And that's when I realized, wait, I can put two flags on the inside of each. But I wanted the second one to be a little shorter, so I brought in my Fiskars Photo Trimmer and cut those down just a little bit more. Now I've brought in those pattern papers from the front and decorated the inside. Once those were all in place, I wanted to add a little something else, and Lizzie sent me some bonus goodies, some peel-offs, with the kit. So I'm going to be using some of those on the inside, just placing a strip at the bottom and cutting off the excess. I did do that off camera, but here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards and got some tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborator sets by using those links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.